I'm John Warnock, president of Adobe Systems, and I'd like to welcome you today to view a tape that we prepared about Adobe Illustrator. This is a product that we are very, very excited about. It addresses... Thanks very much, John. What a fantastic introduction, and hasn't Illustrator come a long way over the years? This episode, we're going to have a look at exactly how far Illustrator's come, and I've got some fantastic tips and even if you've been an Illustrator user for many, many years, even back to, way back to 1987, like John was presenting then, you may be not taking full advantage of all of the great new features that Illustrator CS4 has. So I hope you enjoy these quick tips. Enjoy. Well, what a fantastic introduction. Uh, I'm always excited when anything comes up about Illustrator because it's come so far and I'm sure being over 25 years old now that Illustrator is older than a lot of people watching this video. There's a lot to learn. There's a huge depth to it. Let's get into my favorite little tips, essential things that you must know about Illustrator. First thing that you must know is how to use the appearance panel you must know how to use the appearance panel. Uh, it keeps things editable and fast and fresh and funky. That's what you want. So, step one, how to use it. Well, if I wanted to create a rounded corner shape, and I've just got a basic shape here, use the effects from the bottom of the appearance panel rather than from the top, okay? Because this is where it's all is. This is where it keeps it editable. Choose the effects uh, button at the bottom of the appearance panel there. I'll zoom in so you can see, okay? Down to stylize. Now, when you're under stylize, there's a little pop out. We can go to round corners. Okay? We can give it an amount. Now, when we've got any amount in there, any effect, underneath the round corners, if I choose that, if I choose it, I can then go ahead and change it. So let's make it a bit more rounded. 20, it updates instantly. So it's an editable way of having a rounded corner rectangle. Of course, if we do it this way, uh, and we stretch it across, the rounded corners don't distort like they would another way. What else can we use the appearance panel for? Well, most people will tell you that you can't put a gradient on side, inside text in Illustrator without first turning it to outlines. Well, that's not true. Now you can just say add a new fill, and from the appearance panel, we can both change the color, but also add a gradient right over the top. We've even got access to all of the swatches here and all of the gradients. So you can choose the gradients there, select the gradient, and then of course use the gradient tool to go straight over the top. And that's new as well, a new gradient tool um, to be able to edit straight over the top of an object like that. Let's remove that. Wherever you see anything in the panels uh, in Illustrator now, for example, the stroke panel's got a, got a little uh, blue underline on it, that means we can access the stroke panel. Little pop down menus. You can select everything you need from here. You don't need lots of panels all over the place. We can change the stroke weight and ego. <clears throat> I need to point something out to you here. When I'm adding a stroke around text like that, you'll notice it's encroaching on the shape of the text. Well, this is how we can reorder things. If I drag and drop that behind the fill, then the stroke only extends to the outside. So in the olden days, a long time ago, when John was demonstrating, then you would have to duplicate that shape twice, send one to the back or bring one to the front, so that one shape obscured the other. Now it's all in the one appearance. We can change the stroke from right here, so I want to round off this mitre here. I can do that by clicking on the round mitre. That's very easy. There you go. Something that we can do differently now as well that we would have had to have done differently in the past is to have multiple outlines. So I can duplicate this stroke by dragging and dropping it onto the new thing icon at the base of the panel, the appearance panel, and change the width. Let's change the width, make it thicker, make it a different color, and now I've got a multiple key line. And all of these things are editable. I can come back and edit the color, 
I can come over to this one, make it thicker. It's very easy to start editing these things and that's indeed how I created my logo. Okay, tracing. So tracing something um, is a lot easier too. So if I've got a, a scan of a drawing here, it's an, um, just a, a survey um, of a block of land, I can select this and from Adobe Bridge say File, Place in Illustrator, it's a great way of tracing. So it just places it over the top of my other document. Um, we, could, we can remove that other stuff, I'll just delete it from underneath. If I want to turn this into vectors, I can now use the Live Trace button at the top here. It enables us to turn a pixel-based image into a vector drawing. We can even get it to turn long, thin lines of pixels into actual strokes that we can add a weight to. So that's pretty terrific. We can change the maximum stroke weight so that anything under 15 pixels wide will turn into a stroke. We press trace and we're done. So now we've converted that into strokes. We can expand it and then they're all vectors. So that's fantastic. Okay, one last tip. We're gonna say file and place this time and we're gonna choose a JPEG that I've got on the desktop. This is another tracing method. And just a real quick tip, hit the template button. Now the template button will automatically pop that onto a new layer at the bottom here and you'll see it's locked as a template layer. I can't click it and move it around. If I double click that template layer, you'll see it's been dimmed as well. So that's, that's very exciting, it makes it very easy to use. Now, all we have to do is go onto the new layer that's already there, grab the blob brush tool, okay, we've got a lot of pressure sensitivity there, we can zoom in and start tracing over our image. So, oh, I'm using brown. Why am I using brown? Let's undo those. We've got multiple undos, of course. Something we wouldn't have had in the past. And now I can start tracing over our model. Okay, so I'm just going to be a little bit quick about this. And I'll just do some little drawings there. Obviously cheating, but you know, that's kind of what it's all about here. Um, when we're tracing something. And this is using the new blob brush tool only with CS4. Okay, and we can do a nice little job there. Let's get some, you know, do some nice swishes on the hair. And obviously if you're an illustrator, you can do, you know, some fantastic jobs in, you know, when you've got more than sort of two seconds left um, on your podcast, you can do a lot, lot better than this. So there we go. Um, obviously great fun being able to do all of this stuff and there's way more. I wish I had more time to, to talk you through it, but Illustrator CS4 is well worth having a look at. There's some great other new features in there. Uh, the multiple tab documents, of course, and um, using the, the gradients. You know, we've got pop-up panels everywhere. We can just choose these things. You don't need to have a lot of panel clutter going. So once we're done, we've done our tracing, we've you know got it all happening, you can just turn off the background layer and then you can start doing some really nice tracing. So look at that, Illustrator CS4. I recommend getting into it, have a good look. Um, hope you enjoyed today's tip. One last little thing there.